Hey, you, home recording guy. I'm sure you're aware of something called a FET compressor. And if you're not, please crawl out from whatever rock you've been living under. FET compressors, you've heard them on thousands upon thousands of records. You've seen thousands and thousands of pictures of them. Basically, they're the Universal Audio 1176 and many, many, many clones made thereof. And I'm sure you either own or more than likely have stolen a bunch of plugins that try to emulate the 1176 to varying degrees of success. Depends on who you ask, the people who bought the hardware, people who bought the software, or the people who stole the software. Anyway, point being is, this is something a lot of us use in our day-to-day -day for recording. And the only thing, in my opinion, that's better than having one really awesome FET limiter is two. And once upon a time, UREI, the United Recording Electronics Industry Company, actually built a stereo version of it, and it was called the 1178. And it's freaking awesome. The only problem is they don't make them anymore. And if you can find one, they aren't exactly cheap. Now, just so you guys have an idea what kind of prices we're talking about, I did a little digging. I went on the politically correctness will be enforced arbitrarily gear exchange website, otherwise known as Reverb, and check out these fucking prices for an 1178, a used 1178. Uh, here's one uh, going for an absolute bargain at $4,000. Uh, here's another one, 4630. 4359, 4500, 4802, 4299. Holy crap. Wow, you know what? Those are so freaking affordable. Wow, I can't believe I don't have one already. This is where it gets insane. I dug up a price on a couple of old 1176s from the 70s. These are the Rev F version, whatever the fuck that means. I guess it's the special Dijon version or something like that. Uh, going for a super affordable $13,009.52. With those kind of prices, I'll take six. Fuck me, that's a lot of fucking money. Now here's the thing, I don't need to spend $13,000 on a couple of classic 1176s. Yeah, I'm sure they're great, but you gotta know your audience. And I mean, like, if you're running an independent studio, especially recording heavy bands these days, chances are you're not gonna be doing, you know, chart topic numbers. You're gonna be recording local bands that are doing nine minute fucking guitar wankery, you know, instrumental explorations that nobody could even stand to listen to all their way through even once. So spending 13 grand on a pair of these, it sounds cool, you know, it doesn't quite fit in the whole practicality of things. The other thing is I've got two of these things sitting over here. These are the Stem uh, 76ADG limiting amplifiers, and they do the same thing as an 1176, but they've got different revisions. You can press buttons and it swaps out different parts of the circuitry to emulate the uh, more sought after versions by the court sniffers who love these vintage compressors. And I'm not saying they're completely off their rocker. There might be some sonic advantage. I'm not hearing a huge amount, but whatever. Now I use these things all the time and you can even say that they are just simply awesome. But the big question is, can Stam make a stereo version? Can they do the same thing an 1178 does? And can they do it better? Can they make something goddamn amazing? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Now, I had this giant box show up the other day, and uh, this came from Chile, and it's, uh, oh, it's marked from Stam Audio. How freaking cool is that? Tell you what, let's throw this up on the table. Let's pull it out of the box and see what we get. So over the desktop, I've got the unit installed. Oh, it looks so glorious. It looks so cool. I'm not gonna try and bore you guys to death with, oh, this sounds like this, this sounds like this. I mean, a, a little demo's fine. A really long one, eh, no thanks. Anyway, check this out. So got some room mic set up for a mix I've been working on. Yeah, nice stereo image. Everything kind of works. Watch what happens when I drop the stem in. Yeah, you can see this is how the board works. It's always sending a signal there. And then we just drop it in up here. I'm gonna bring that back a little bit. That might be a little much. But Stam! Wow, that is wild. Boo! Boo! That was the worst thing I ever heard. It was terrible. Horrendous. Well, it wasn't that bad. Pop it in the mix. Pull this back a little bit. Mute those. Bring them in. Bring them in a little more.
pretty damn sick, I gotta say. That works pretty damn well. Let's tell how explosive those are. And this is where it gets crazy. We can we can make some adjustments here. You know, we've got a we've got a blend control. So like, here's the original signal. Bring it in just a little bit. And then there's the full. And then, you know, we can just pass the signal with no compression. Kick in the compression, you know. Play with the ratio. And then we got like an AB thing. One thing I do want to mention here is, is the uh, high pass filter here. This is really neat. So we can actually set this up to kind of like bypass the kick. And so it'll just slam down on the snare. This is kind of neat. Check this out. And then bring it back. And it starts working on the kick as well. I was kind of digging that right about there. So it isn't quite jumping down on the kick, but it's kind of slamming on the snare. It's giving it a crunchier sound there. That's pretty freaking cool. Now, the other cool thing on here is the iron control. If we uh, switch this in and out. It's a little bit crunchier with it off. We kick it in, we get a kind of a uh, transformer saturation thing going on. That's pretty sick. I'm kind of curious how that's going to sound on a full mix. We're going to set that up in just a minute, but I wanted to show you guys that. And then let me pull up another mix here. I'm going to show you how it works on overheads. It might be a little too much on overheads. I don't know. You guys tell me. Let's see what we got here. All right, so we got the overheads queued up. Let's see what happens when we give it some stem treatment. Stem! Wow, that is stem cool. Might be a little harsh on the cymbals. Okay, that might be pushing it just a little too bad. I really like it on rooms, might be a little over the top on overheads. But the crazy thing is because we've got this knob over here, the attack, there's a little switch here, you kick it in, and then that slows the attack down to something where you can use it on a full mix. Now this is the thing, this is the thing, you get an original 1178, it can't do any of this stuff. It doesn't have the switchable iron, it doesn't have the high pass filter, and it doesn't have the slow attack mode. So basically you can't use it on full mixes because it's just too quick and it'll just crush everything. Let me swap out my heritage successor for the Stam 1178. Let's try it on the source, see what we get. I'll be back in one Stam second. All right, so I just ripped apart my rack and got the stand thing hooked up and it's ready to go on the mix bus. I just want to make a point here if you guys are working with external gear, uh, even though it's a stereo unit, the inputs and outputs do run independently. So a little little point you might want to try doing here. So if you're going to go to outboard, you know, you can pull up a Reaper tone generator, run a one kilohertz signal through it and make sure you're getting uh, on the on the front screen here, make sure you're getting perfectly level stereo returns. Pretty simple here. Set your inputs so they match up here to the same amount of gain reduction, and then check your output here on your return, and you're good to go. You are perfectly balanced for stereo. That's why we have one kilohertz tone generators, so we can do that kind of thing. And I was initially not liking this at all. I'm like, what the hell is this? Uh, this sounds pretty damn awful. But after playing with a couple of the settings and whatnot, I think I got it figured out so it's going to work in the context of a mix. I've got my main fader here feeding it, and I want to do what I would do with a friend SSL type mix, which is give it about 4 dBs of gain reduction somewhere roughly, maybe a little more, a little less. Let's see what we get. And I just bring this up, this master fader, and feed it that way. Wow, that is pretty stem cool. Are you saying boo or boons? Now, I'm going to give this thing my judgment, and that is... Brutal, really. Brutal. Yeah, I got to say, it's pretty stem brutal. I'm pretty stem impressed. That's for sure. Uh, it just worked so well on rooms, and it really blew me away on, on the mix bus. It's kind of treating the snare a little bit differently than it would, say, be on the Heritage Successor. Either one's great. Either one would be a great choice. 
But the, the 78 there, that is just pretty stem versatile as well because it worked so great on drum room too. Something I probably wouldn't put the other compressor on, that's for sure. So if you're in the market for a really badass stereo compressor, you might want to take a look at the stem because it's a pretty stem good choice in my opinion. Anyway, I'll have some links in the description below. Many thanks to everybody at Stem Audio for sending this because it's pretty freaking cool. It's going in my rack. You're not getting it back, you guys. Oh, well, too bad. Anyway, I'm going to have some more tutorials coming up on the show real soon. I'm going to show you guys how I get my snare sound. I'm definitely uh, channeling some Andy Walls with this method. And if you dug you know, records like you know, Sepultura's Chaos AD or anything like that, um, Andy mixed those. And I've kind of figured out how he does it. And it's going to be pretty damn cool. So I'm going to do a breakdown on that and just kind of show you how I'm working that method into, say, a modern production technique. You can use it on a board or you can do it completely in the box and software as well. I'm going to show you both methods. Uh, and of course, make sure you're freaking subscribed. I mean, like, I know, you know, 593,000 of you guys watched the show last month and didn't hit the subscribe button. So, like, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button like you keep hitting that Reaper still evaluating button and throw me a freaking bump. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot.